You can spend that money. You're kidding. No, sir, because you're the winner in the WLEA shopping spree. Friends, you can sign up now at leading merchants throughout the area for the WLEA shopping spree. And every week, we're going to pick a store and give somebody $100 to go in and shop in that store. All you got to do is sign up and then keep listening because you could be a winner in the WLEA shopping spree. And you can sign up for the shopping spree at Carpet Showcase in Plaza 21. People who can help you with your next wallpapering project also sign up at Size. Sure, save an art for it. If you're like most people we know, you'll enjoy shopping at Size. Our next drawing for a $100 shopping spree is coming Thursday morning. Sound off next. It's time now for WLEA's opinion program, Sound Off. And your host is Kevin Doran. And our guest this morning is uh, someone that many of us know very well, Gene Burns. Gene uh, started in radio, I believe, uh, in Hornell at what was then the uh, radio station known as WWHG. Went on to work in Bath for many years and uh, then on to greater things. And currently is a talk show host at a very popular one in Orlando, Florida. But that's not why we have Gene Burns on the air with us this morning. Gene is also running for president of the United States on the Libertarian Party, and we want to talk about his candidacy and some of the positions he's taking. But first of all, we'll welcome you back to your hometown. Well, I guess it isn't your hometown, is it, Gene, but you grew up here. Well, I grew up there. We graduated 25 years ago this year from Hornell High School on the occasion of my mother's 25th anniversary, so when we come back in June for the alumni banquet, it'll be her 50th anniversary and my 25th. Well, congratulations to both of you, and uh, I know a lot of your friends have called the station eager to hear you on the radio and even more eager to see you when you come back in June. Uh, First of all, it occurs to me that if you do declare yourself a candidate for president, doesn't that automatically cost you your job? Well, it doesn't automatically. It causes a few problems. As you know, the Federal Communications Commission requirement is that equal time be given candidates for the same office. Well, at the moment, I am a candidate for the Libertarian Party presidential nomination. So if you construe the language, uh, I think, uh, narrowly, any other candidate for the Libertarian Party presidential nomination would have a claim on some equal time. There are no other candidates for the Libertarian Party presidential nomination, so we don't feel that's a problem. And even if there were, uh, having a talk show in Orlando would only allow them to be speaking to the Libertarians of Florida as opposed to the Libertarians of the other 49 states, and they'd have to be around those states also, as I am on weekends, going to state conventions. So at the moment, it's not a problem. Now, the Libertarian Party nominates in August of this year, a year early, earlier than the major parties. So when and if I am the nominee of the party, then, of course, any other nominee for president would have a claim of equal time, but the major parties don't nominate until a year later. So there won't be another nominee for president unless there are some minor party candidates. So I don't feel that's a problem. So you say that there are no other candidates for the Libertarian nomination? That's correct. Well, does it look now as though you will be the candidate? I would say that that's a fair bet. I was in your neck of the woods this past weekend at the New York State Convention in Albany. I was down at the Pennsylvania State Convention in Harrisburg. I've been in Louisiana, New Jersey, Georgia, California. And um, we are sewing up considerable support. I think we have so much of a lead at the moment that it would be virtually insurmountable for any other candidate. So I think it's a fair bet that I will be the party's nominee in August in New York. Okay, now, Gene, we're going to take a break, and I'll be back, and we'll talk about that platform you're running on. But right now, we want to take this message. After many months of research, Nutrisun has developed the most complete high-energy formula on the market today. It's called Energize, and it's available now at Nature's Way. The key ingredient in Energize is octocosanol the best ingredient ever derived from pure wheat germ. The Navy Underwater Swimmer School and the U.S. Marine Corps Underwater Demolition Team experimented with octocosanol, and each team found that octocosanol gave them more strength, energy, and endurance. Energize combines with octocosanol, bee pollen, and zin. Just try Energize and see for yourself what it can do for you. Don't be surprised if you feel better, have more strength, and have more endurance. A month's supply costs only 30 cents a day. See Nature's Way on the overhead. Also, Radiance Nutramega Vitamin is on sale. 120 capsules, only $13.99. We're back on Sound Off. Our, our guest this morning is Gene Burns, who is running for the Libertarian Party nomination for president. And from what he tells us, it appears very likely he will be the nominee of that party for president of the United States. And uh, we'd like to talk a little bit, if we may, about the platform. I have... Uh, one of your platforms in front of us, I'm sure it's a summary of your positions, and I'd like to ask you some questions on that, if I may. Sure. Uh, first of all, let's talk about foreign policy. It says here, and this is quoting from your uh, campaign flyer, our current policy of steering, uh, stealing 
from hardworking Americans to send billions of dollars to distant places in support of oppressive governments which we would not willingly tolerate is grotesque. We must terminate our involvement in NATO, our involvement in the Pacific perimeter, and foreign aid. Such moves, incidentally, represent an annual savings of at least $180 billion. That sounds more like something we might hear from the Green Party in West Germany, Gene, than something we'd hear from the Libertarian Party in this country. It's a rather rather radical position, isn't it, pulling out of NATO? It is a radical position, and uh, the Libertarians tend to be a radical party. Our basic foreign policy is very simple. We do not believe in intervention abroad in any way, shape, or form. We believe that our national defense should be aimed at our national security. We believe that our national security is defined as the protection of the lives, liberty, and property of the people contained within our national borders. We believe that we should defend our national borders with every technology available to us in a fashion which will allow us to maintain our freedom. We do not feel that it's our obligation to defend Europe. That is the obligation of the Europeans, nor is it our obligation to defend Japan. That is the, uh, the obligation of the Japanese. I think what most Americans need to realize is that every American citizen in this country pays $782 a year in the national defense if you were to divide it up equally. Europeans spend $350, or roughly half that, and the Japanese, amazingly, spend $89, or roughly a seventh of that. And yet, we taxpayers provide the basic European defense and the basic Japanese defense. That's simply not fair. We think the Europeans and the Japanese ought to bear up under their own responsibility to, de to defend their own continent. And then if sometime in the future they find themselves in difficulty, we'll consider a plea from them to help them, as we did, of course, at the beginning of the Second World War. But to continue to spend $180 billion in the defense of those two areas and maintain 350,000 troops under arms in Europe, not only is nonsense and a waste of American taxpayers' money, but a provocation to the Soviet Union. I mean, here we are saying we want to diminish weapons, we want to seek a mutual uh, disarmament, uh, and we're announcing that we're going to station more crews and Pershing missiles on the European continent, which is contiguous to the Soviet Union's territory. If I were a Soviet soldier, that would make me very nervous, as indeed it has made the Soviets nervous. Well, practically speaking, though, wouldn't you suspect that had we not had NATO in the late 40s and had we not supplied uh, uh, the Europeans with a great deal of aid under Marshall, the Marshall Plan and then subsequent aid until they got back on their feet, that they'd all be communists today and under the Russians' uh, domination? Well, it's a possibility. I don't think Russians are 12 feet tall. I think their average height is about 6 feet, maybe a little less. And I don't think they're as awesome as others do. And one of the things we desperately need to do is put the Soviet Union in perspective. We're talking about a country that is pinned down by mountain tribesmen in Afghanistan and taking terrible losses there. A country which has committed several divisions to the Mongolian frontier to defend against a perceived threat from China. And a country which is so terrified of a man who has no weapons, the Pope, that they would indulge in the Bulgarian connection to try to wipe him out for fear that his Polish connections might trigger some kind of a revolt on their Eastern European flank. Now that kind of a country, even though it may have sophisticated weapons as I believe it does, is not the kind of a country that's going to roll over Europe. Back at the end of the Second World War, maybe the Soviet Union would have taken some more territory, but I believe the Soviet Union takes this territory contiguous to its borders because of its terrible uh, experience in the Second World War. The Russians are paranoid about their national defense, and I think we might be too if we had lost 20 million citizens in the Second World War, which is the Russian war loss, 900,000 in one city siege at Leningrad alone, and had had our territory invaded by Hitler. So it doesn't surprise me that the Soviet Union wants to defend itself against that kind of an invasion, and I don't think the Soviet Union wants to roll up Europe but I also think that if it might want to do that, I have some faith in the Europeans' ability to prevent it. Uh, what, we, what might have occurred at the end of the Second World War, I'm not sure, but I say, to, to say this to that. Even if NATO were a good idea in its inception, there is no law that says the United States taxpayers must stand behind these treaties forever and ever once the job is done. If we had gotten out of the Southeast Asia Treaty when we should have, under the terms of the treaty, we'd have saved the flower of a generation in, in Vietnam. And I think we ought to prevent that kind of a disaster in Europe by letting the Europeans take over their defense, which is, I think, their proper role. Well, do you really believe that the Europeans could withstand a Russian onslaught tomorrow if they didn't have the United States backing them? In fact, could they, could they even uh, uh, sustain a credible defense even with us backing them? Maybe not tomorrow. Uh, we may be talking about phasing in and phasing out here. We may want to give the Europeans some time. I think the NATO treaty, incidentally, requires a year's notice and a five-year withdrawal period, I suppose we could live up to that and let the Europeans strengthen their defenses. But let, let me be much harsher than that. 
a society which cannot defend itself does not deserve defense. A society which will not preserve its own freedom is a society which doesn't deserve the freedom. Now, if it gets into a jackpot against overwhelming odds, it may ask its friends to come to its defense. And I'm not hostile to that at all. Helping friends out is, is to me, a very moral position. But to pin a friend down to the cost of 150 billions a year and 350,000 troops permanently in place as a substitute for your own defense, let's not forget that now. We are there because we didn't want the Germans to have a strong army, fearful that they would play games again as they did in Europe. And we didn't want the Japanese to have a strong army, a navy, fearful that they would do over again what they did in the Second World War. Now, it might have been a good idea at the time, but we have to recognize that we are substituting American money and American men-at-arms for the proper job of those people, and that's got to stop. Then, if they, having developed their army, and incidentally, we talk about these countries as if they were poor children who couldn't defend themselves, we're talking about a country like Germany, which at the height of Hitler's ambition, almost took the entire European continent. These are not people who are incapable of fighting. The Prussian military tradition is one of the most enviable in the world. All I'm saying is it's their job to defend themselves and not our job. Okay, another part of your platform, nuclear disarmament, again I'm quoting, since we are the nation which by the past expansionist and interventionist policies has escalated the disastrous nuclear arms race, we can certainly lead the way back to sanity by taking unilateral steps toward mutual disarmament. Now again, uh, some people would question the premise that the United States is responsible for the arms race, and secondly, they would question the wisdom of unilateral disarming or even steps in that direction. Well, I certainly, I am not in favor of unilateral disarmament as it is uh, traditionally uh, uh, defined in this country. I'm not in favor of us disarming while our enemy does not. Uh, in fact, the steps toward un unilateral disarmament are the withdrawal from NATO. I think if we withdraw 350,000 troops from the European continent, and cease $150 billion expenditure in Europe on defense, we make a very loud statement to the Soviet Union that we no longer wish to threaten her territory directly. I mean, we, we Americans go bananas, we certainly do here in Florida, about the presence of Cuba right off our coast, 90 miles. And we consider that a dastardly act on the part of the communists. Well, if that's a dastardly act, then why is it not a dastardly act when we place 350,000 men at arms right on the Soviet Union's flank on the European continent? We have to realize that that is a serious provocation to the Soviet Union, given Soviet paranoia about its national defense. It's just an incredible paradox that our president or anyone in our government would say, we desperately seek mutual disarmament, but we're getting ready to put more cruise and Pershing missiles right on your border. Uh, we have got to, that's the unilateral step. Let's get out of NATO, which we shouldn't be in anyway, and by doing what we, what we should do morally and for our own citizens so as not to bleed them dry to defend Europe, we will make a gigantic statement to the Soviet Union which says, look, we want to live in peace. We want you to have secure borders. We want secure borders. We're going to take this massive threat off your flank in Europe, and we expect you to give us uh, some sort of sign in return maybe by getting out of Cuba, maybe whatever, uh, that you agree that this kind of step is necessary to sanity in the world. Okay, let's talk about Social Security. Again, quoting, this is the premier government fraud of the 20th century, a tax sold to decent, hardworking citizens as an investment. If a private insurance company operated such a scheme, its officers and directors would be in jail. Are you uh, advocating abolition of Social Security? Yes, I'm advocating, first of all, making Social Security voluntary. Uh, and allowing those of us who are in the system who feel we can do better in the private market to go to the private market and do better. If folks wish to stay in Social Security, and I can't imagine anyone who at that point would, but if they do, they should have the right to make that choice. People who say, but Gene, if you do that, of course, Social Security is finished are correct, because I don't think people will stay in that kind of a system, and Social Security ought to be done with. It's not an annuity program. It's not an investment for retirement. It's a tax. Every dime which I pay into Social Security this year, every dime which you pay, every dime which our listeners pay, is paid out immediately to recipients. There's no money in your account. There's a record, of course, of what you have paid. And since Social Security is a political creature, which is to say that it could be abolished by the Congress at any time, you have no guarantee that what you've invested will ever come back to you. So what I say to the Social Security system is, look, you've stolen how, ma how many thousands of dollars from me over the years I can't calculate. Keep it. I don't want it. I don't want it back. I don't want any interest on it. Keep it. Just let me out. I'm 42 years old. Let me out. My company pension plan is much better than Social Security could ever be. My private annuity plan is better. Let me put the Social Security money, pay the maximum you're talking of over $2,000, into the bank in a simple IRA when you came to retire 
you'd have a lot of money. Social Security never was an investment for retirement. It was a tax based upon a fraudulent assumption about demographics, which has been blown right out of the water. And it's going broke, even, even though it's been just fixed with a massive infusion of capital by the government's so-called rescue plan. It'll be going broken another five or six years. Our time is up, Gene. I'm, I know you appreciate the problem of time since you work in radio. Thank you very much for being with us. Pleasure. Our guest this morning was Gene Burns, candidate for president on the Libertarian Party. Hello. Oh, say, honey, did you remember to take your pills today? No, I ran out yesterday. Yesterday? You shouldn't be running out like that. Well, I forgot. Uh, I haven't got time to go to the drugstore. I'm too busy. I'll call Connor's Pharmacy. They'll deliver right to your office. Connor's? Sure. They deliver all day and evening. But this isn't an emergency. Doesn't have to be an emergency. Connor's Delivery Service is a constant service. Connor's Pharmacy, they deliver right to your door. In fact, they'll pick up the prescription at the doctor's office and then bring the medicine to you. WLA, Hornell, New York. From ABC News, I'm Joe Templeton. It's believed as many as 1.3 million voters may go to the polls today in Chicago to pick their next mayor. They'll make their choice between Democrat Harold Washington, who is black, and Republican Bernard Epton. More from ABC's Jerry King in Chicago. As one veteran columnist tells me, the campaign is over, but the memory lingers on. The campaign has been one of the most bitter, the most divisive ever seen here in Chicago. There have been charges of racism on both sides and gutter politics. Somehow, whoever wins today will have to placate the supporters of whomever loses. That's considered a difficult task. But the process may have already started last night. In a rare two-way discussion on ABC's WLS-TV here, both agreed on the need for cooperation. Washington invited Epton to breakfast tomorrow morning. After it's all over, and Epton agreed to pay for it. Jerry King, ABC News, Chicago. It's clear there's a lot of interest in this race. Officials say absentee balloting has been running at twice the pace of Chicago's last mayoral election. If Washington wins, he would become Chicago's first black mayor. I'll have more after this. Budgets are tight these days, and nobody wants to spend more than they have to for car insurance. It's a good... Time to check with State Farm. Get together with a State Farm agent. Get a price from the auto insurer who's famous for low rates. And don't forget, that low price buys the great service your State Farm agent is famous for. Get real value for your car insurance dollar. Check with State Farm. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Oh, Mr. Pitney. Yes, Mr. Bowles. Oh, Mr. Pitney. Yes, Mr. Bowles. Do people know our copiers far and wide? Yes, the name of Pitney Bowles is one everybody knows. Absolutely, Mr. Pitney. Positively, Mr. Bowles. Yes, Pitney Bowles has a complete line of office copiers, from an economical desktop model for the smallest business to full feature consoles for the biggest. To find out more about our copiers, just look under Pitney Bowles in your phone book. Absolutely, Mr. Pitney. Positively, Mr. Bowles. If you went to sleep before the major Oscars were handed out last night in Hollywood, the movie Gandhi picked up eight awards, including Best Picture, Best Actor Ben Kingsley, and Best Director Richard Attenborough. Meryl Streep was named Best Actress for Sophie's Choice. Jessica Lange and Lou Gossett won Oscars for supporting roles. And by the way, Lou Gossett has agreed to take the role of the late Egyptian President Anwar Sadat in a four-hour TV miniseries based on Sadat's autobiography. Polish labor leader Lech Wałęsa says he's met with some of the underground leaders of the Solidarity Movement. First time he's publicly avowed doing so since he was released from custody in November. The Senate today begins debating the nomination of Kenneth Edelman to head the Arms Control and Disarmament Agency. A vote is scheduled for Thursday. President Reagan meets today with Democratic congressmen. The president's trying to gain support for either changing or killing a nuclear freeze resolution to be taken up tomorrow in the House. Well, Mr. Reagan meets about an hour from now with the Sultan of Oman. He'll be talking with the Persian Gulf ruler about the possibilities for some comprehensive peace plan in the Middle East. More rain expected to move into the south in the next day or so, but it's not, not expected to cause a lot of new flooding in Mississippi and Louisiana. It looks like the worst is over there. In Hartville, Ohio, an auto products company with fewer than 100 new jobs got more than 12,000 applications yesterday. Some people parked in cars with license plates from across Ohio and West Virginia began lining up around the plant Sunday night. There was a fire in a four-story apartment building just off Main Street in Kansas City last night. One woman died in the fire, several people injured. A Ralph Nader back health group wants the FDA to require warning notices on diet supplements which contain large amounts of vitamin A. The Center for Science and the Public Interest says too much vitamin A can produce such symptoms as headaches, nausea, and joint pains. 
While the dollar is turning in a mixed performance on European money markets so far this morning, gold prices are said to be higher. And researchers at Cornell University have come up with a tearless, a tearless onion, a new variety called the sweet sandwich onion, which can be peeled, cut, diced, and eaten without causing the cook to, to cry over his work. This is ABC News. The best Western crown is your assurance of lodging convenience, comfort, and value. Before your next business or vacation trip, stop in at any Best Western hotel or motor inn for your free, full-color, 300-page road atlas and travel guide. Rest assured. Make reservations at any Best Western, see your travel agent, or call toll-free 1-800-528-1234. For the ABC Information Network, I'm Joe Templeton. Hey, how would you like to win an Atari video computer or a new Kodak disc camera? Well, they'll be given away to lucky winners right here in Hornell. Just register today at the Stationery Center on Main Street, the site of the gigantic red tag sale. The $200 Atari video computer and the $67.95 Kodak disc camera will be given away in Hornell. And you'll find the sale prices at the Stationery Center just as exciting as those prizes. Basic office supplies all on sale, from pens to files, even office furniture, paper clips to fans, staplers to chairs. In fact, lots of things that you would like for your home, all on sale during the red tag sale. But the sale ends April 16th. So hurry in today to the Stationery Center. You won't be sorry. And you might win one of those fabulous prizes. Stationery Center, Main Street, downtown Hornell. It's 37 degrees. The weather outlook chance of showers today. I'm Joy Gilmore with the latest news from WLEA. More than 250 people turned out at a meeting of the Town Board of Bath last night to oppose the town's full value property assessment. Town and County Supervisor Bill Tobin said the board took no action on rejecting the assessment figures as requested by the crowd, but agreed to set up a special meeting on the issue. Tobin gathered names of those who wanted informal hearings with the county's full value contractor, Finnegan and Associates, and added that many complaints would be settled at the hearings. The Steuben County Taxpayers Association gathers tonight at the Hornell High School. Plans for what is termed an eight-year assessment program and holding taxpayers' money in an escrow account will be discussed. The meeting will be held at the Hornell High School Conference Room at 7.30. Hornell Police yesterday charged 19-year-old Matthew Goodsell, 378 1⁄2 Seneca Road, North Hornell, with criminal possession of a controlled substance. Goodsell was arrested for possession of a small quantity of hashish while at his mother's home on Jane Street. More news after this. Come to the Expo, Expo 83, coming your way Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Armory on Seneca Street. Yes, come to the Expo with over 40 exhibitors and lots of fun for the entire family. Lots of bargains, too. This year, we have many new items in the Expo. For example, you've been hearing a lot about the new ways to receive TV via satellite right in your home. We'll have a display. In fact, lots of new scientific displays this year. The latest computers for the home and the office. We even have that computerized sewing machine returning this year. And for the first time in Expo, we have many boutique items, including beautiful glass collectibles. Again this year, horse and buggy rides around town and pony rides at the Expo itself. Expo 83, free to the public. Bring the family to Expo 83, Friday 6 till 10, Saturday 9 till 9, Sunday noon till 6 at the Hornell Armory on Seneca Street. Expo 83, don't miss it. Governor Cuomo and Shimon County are fighting in court over the appointment of an acting sheriff. Cuomo yesterday obtained a temporary restraining order to prevent the county from replacing Sheriff Patrick Patterson. Patterson was elected last November, but is resigning next week to take a job with the FBI. The county claims its charter gives it the power to make the appointment. Cuomo said county law gives those powers only to the governor. Next news at 10 o'clock. If you see news happen, call the WLEA News Hotline, 324-1480. May I help you, sir? Yes, I need to buy some paint. <laughs> 
What's so funny? Why do you want to buy paint here when you can get free paint at Mullen Carpets of Element? Free paint? That's right. In order to introduce themselves as the newest paint dealer in the area, Mullen Carpets is giving away quality Pratt & Lambert paints in over 700 colors. Through April 23rd only, make any $50 carpet or vinyl purchase and receive a free quart of paint, any color. Make any $80 carpet or vinyl purchase and receive a free gallon of Pratt & Lambert paint, any color. Make any carpet or vinyl purchase of $100 or more and take home two gallons of free Pratt & Lambert paint in your choice of colors. Mullen Carpets of Elman would reduce prices on all floor covering and free paint. You save twice at Mullen Carpets of Elman. But hurry, this free paint sale ends April 23rd at Mullen Carpets. Good morning, I'm Beth Moore, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of our program, uh, Overcast. Uh